Hi there, and welcome to episode 50 of What the Cluck, where we talk about raising backyard chickens for eggs and meat. I'm Maya with Frugal Chicken, and if this is your first time listening to What the Cluck, let me tell you a little bit about who I am and what this podcast is all about. I'm the founder of the backyard chicken blog, Frugal Chicken, which is viewed by about 150,000 chicken owners every month, and you can find that at thefrugalchicken.com. I'm the author of Chickens Naturally Raising a Sustainable Flock and a contributing writer to Backyard Poultry, Countryside, and Chickens magazines, and I've been featured as a backyard chicken expert by those magazines, as well as by NBC and the Epic Times. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea who I am and why we are doing this podcast today. So in this episode, we're going to talk about preventing iron deficiency and whether feeding algae to your flock is a good idea or not. We're going to talk specifically about kelp and spirulina, and we'll touch on diatomaceous earth and whether you should feed that to your chickens as well. We're also going to talk about wheat and whether it can help your chickens absorb iron. Now, you want to stick around for the end of this episode, because when it's over, I'm going to tell you where you can get a free copy of my book, The Better Egg. You want a copy of this book because you're going to discover the one thing that you should always feed for healthier hens, and I'll give you the URL to go grab that book for free at the end of this episode. Now, before we begin, this episode is sponsored by Manapro Poultry. I'm happy to partner with them to bring you this episode, and that's because I believe their products are the best on the market. When it comes to raising a healthy flock and preventing vitamin and mineral deficiency, a proper diet is the basis of all of that, and Manapro has a full line of organic crumbles that are specially formulated to make sure that your hens are getting the right amount of nutrients. They really put a lot of time and effort into making sure that these products are as healthy for your hens as possible, and I do actually think that they're some of the best on the market. If you go to the Manapro Poultry Facebook page, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes, you can grab a free coupon book with $32 worth of coupons in it. So if you want to make sure that your hens are getting everything that they need to live healthy lives, the next time that you're in the feed store, check out Manapro's Organic Crumbles. Grab a bag, and you can be sure that your hens are getting everything that they need to lead healthy lives. Now, very quickly, before we begin talking about feeding algae and iron deficiency in your flock and all that good stuff, Just as a reminder, this information is for entertainment and informational purposes only. I'm a backyard chicken expert, but I'm not a licensed vet, and if you think that your chicken might be iron deficient or sick, you should seek advice from a licensed veterinarian. And honestly, if I think one of my chickens is sick and I'm not really sure what's going on, that's exactly what I do. I do actually take them to the vet. So just as a reminder. Now let's get talking about whether you should feed algae to your chickens and all sorts of stuff about iron deficiency. So the first question you probably have is, why feed algae? And that's basically what this whole episode is about, so we're going to answer that question in massive detail in this episode. Um, We're going to talk specifically about kelp and spirulina, and we're going to touch on diatomaceous earth and whether you should feed that to your chickens. We're also going to talk about wheat and whether or not wheat can actually help your chickens absorb iron. And I think you're going to be very interested in the answer to this, especially since wheat is such an easy thing to feed your chickens. Now, algae is a good source of iron, vitamin K, vitamin C, and calcium. And calcium in particular, all these are very important vitamins, but calcium in particular will help your chickens produce healthy eggshells. So if you've had some some chickens that have been laying eggs and the eggshell quality isn't the best that it could be, maybe they're thin, maybe they're cracking, you definitely want to make sure that they're getting enough calcium. Now, feeding algae as a supplement, you don't want to feed it as the only thing you're feeding your chickens, but if you feed it as a supplement, and we'll talk a bit under, um, as we talk about each individual algae, we'll talk about how to feed it, but if you feed it as a supplement, it will help prevent iron deficiency in your chickens, and this is critical. If they become iron deficient, and we'll talk a bit more about this in a second, but if they become iron deficient, you're looking at a lot of problems, such as anemia, um, inability to breathe, decreased organ function, that sort of thing. So making sure that they're getting enough iron, just as you would for a child, is critical to their health. Now let's touch very quickly on iron deficiency and why it's such a problem with chickens. It's it, This can happen very easily if your chickens aren't getting enough to eat, and you know that could be either you're not feeding them enough or there's other hens that have been preventing them from getting to the food. And that's something that we've actually dealt with here um, a t- one or two times on our farm. Um, we've had hens that, you know, pullets that for whatever reason can't 
get to the feed, which is one reason why I'm always telling people have more than one feeder. You know, we'll have one feeder for every three hens. And even if you have three hens, you always want to put out more than one feeder just to make sure that everybody can get their feed. If they can't, they can become iron deficient, and this will lead to problems such as anemia and a reduction in their red blood cell count. And what that means is that they're going to have a decreased ability to breathe. The red blood cells that are produced by the iron help transport oxygen around their body. So if they don't have enough red blood cells, they're iron deficient, they have a decrease in red blood cell count, it can prevent the oxygen from getting around their body, which will then you know, cause organ failure eventually. It can have they can have a hard time breathing, that sort of thing, in a very general sense. So you always want to make sure that your chickens are getting enough iron. Now, for chickens that are red, you know, for example, production reds or Rhode Island reds, or any chicken that has red feathers, red in its feathers, they can actually cause the feathers to lose their pigmentation because the iron that they might consume in their diet will otherwise go towards make sure they have enough red blood cells. And, you know, this can very easily be corrected when you start feeding your chickens more iron the pigmentation will come back into their feathers and that sort of thing. So that's something that can happen if your chickens aren't getting enough iron. And it's actually one indicator that they're maybe not getting enough iron in their diet. You know, if you see them start to lose a lot of the pigmentation in the feathers, their feathers start to look dull, that sort of thing, that can be a good indicator that you might want to you know, look at the iron levels in their diet and start supplementing with something like algae. Now, if you're feeding your hens a good, solid commercial feed, um, you know, something like Manapro, you can be pretty sure that they're getting enough iron in their diet. As long as they're eating enough and as long as they're eating a diet formulated for their nutritional needs, it's unlikely that they're going to become iron deficient. However, it can happen. And if you're concerned that they're not getting enough iron or if you're concerned, you just want to make sure that they're getting enough iron, you can go ahead and supplement with something like algae. And you particularly might want to consider offering a iron supplement, you know, something like something like algae, for example, if you make your own feeds and you know, you just want to make double sure that they're getting everything that they need. So now let's move on to kelp. And kelp is, you know, what you see people generally recommending in order to make sure that your chickens are getting enough iron. You know, if you don't know what kelp is, it's basically just seaweed. It's a type of seaweed that grows in the ocean. It grows in these large forests and it's a, it's a brown algae. It's a very good source of iron, vitamin K, vitamin C, and calcium. Now, there's been a number of studies on chickens that have shown that kelp is actually beneficial in improving their overall health and that sort of thing. And one recent study in particular showed that broiler chicks fed a fermented kelp extract were healthier because they are able to absorb more nutrients from their feed and their immune systems seem to be better and they also showed more antioxidants in their bodies. And this is actually particularly important for people, especially if you plan to either, you know, eat your chickens at some point or, you know, if you're obviously going to eat the eggs. But also for their health, you know, as they're living and growing, offering them kelp is one way to make sure that they're getting enough iron in their diet. Now, the way that you can feed kelp is by adding one tablespoon per adult chicken into their feed two to three times a week. So if you have six hens, put six tablespoons into their feed and just feed it that way. Now, I like to feed supplements like this. I like to feed them free choice. You know, some people grind them up and they mix them directly into the feed, that sort of thing, and that's fine. Personally, I like to offer it free choice, however, and let the chicken choose whether or not it wants to eat it. And the reason for that is if they do happen to get too much iron, it can have adverse effects and it can have um, it can cause problems with their organs and everything. So that's why I like to feed it free choice. However, you know, again, the amount still stands, which is one tablespoon per chicken two to three times a week. Now, like kelp, spirulina is a good source of essential vitamins and minerals that chickens need. And in a very recent study, and I mean like, you know, in the past couple of months, the study showed that chickens fed spirulina and vitamin E were actually able to combat heat stress better than chickens that weren't. And this is a particular, you know, something that's particularly interesting to us now that it's coming into summer and, you know, we're worried about our chickens getting heat stressed and, and everything. So the study showed that adding spirulina to their diet will actually help them handle heat stress better than they would otherwise. So in the study, chicks were given a daily feed and it was supplemented with spirulina and vitamin E and they were placed in an environment that causes heat stress. Now overall, the chicks that were heat stressed and they happened to eat the spirulina and vitamin E, they grew better and they were healthier and they had better immune systems. So, you know, this was actually a very interesting study to me because I had never actually thought about spirulina and chickens. Um, 
but it it showed that in addition to helping them, you know, absorb iron and you know produce enough red blood cells to keep their bodies healthy, spirulina had the additional benefit of helping them combat heat stress. So this summer, you know, if you're if you are worried about your chickens in the heat, you know, maybe you go to work and you're worried about them being out in the sun, adding spirulina might help them reduce you know, the effects of heat stress. It might help them bear the heat a little bit better. Now, it's hard to give a recommendation for how much spirulina to feed um, simply because it hasn't been studied extensively. However, I can tell you that in this study, what they did is they fed 1.5 grams of spirulina and 75 milligrams of vitamin E per one kilogram. And that's what helped the chicks handle the heat stress. So I think that that's something, you know, good to go by. You know, for every kilogram of feed, add 1.5 1.5 grams of spirulina and 75 milligrams of vitamin E. Now I would test it out a little bit, you know, add it at these rates and see how your flock does with it. And let me know if it seems like they're able to handle heat stress a little bit better with these, you know, the algae and the extra vitamins in it. Now, if you're not sure where to get kelp or spirulina, um, you can actually buy it online and I'll put some links in the show notes where you can get them for the kelp. If you're listening to this on Blog Talk Radio or if you're listening to this on your Android, you can buy the kelp at thefrugalchicken.com slash kelp. And you can buy the spirulina at thefrugalchicken.com slash spirulina. That's S-P-I-R-U-L-I-N-A. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll link you to the sources where I would personally buy these. Now, I have not yet fed my flock spirulina because I just came across this study and I had to tell you guys about it and these results are actually pretty exciting. I do regularly feed my flock kelp and that's because I've had good results with it. Um, I like to make sure that my hens and my roosters are getting enough uh, iron in their diet so I just supplement it with kelp free choice. But I have, I think after reading this study I will start adding spirulina to their diet just to make sure that, you know, especially this summer, just make sure that, that they're getting everything that they need and they are able to handle the heat. You know, it gets very hot here. It gets very hot and humid. So I plan to add that to their diet this summer just to help them combat heat a little bit better. Now, if you have followed me on Frugal Chicken for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of wheat fodder and of fermented wheat seeds. And I came across a study this week that tested the effects of soaked wheat berries and how it helps chickens absorb iron. So it was actually a very interesting study. So what they did is they studied the natural prebiotics found in wheat grains, and they found that it increased the beneficial bacteria in your chicken's intestines, and it actually helped chickens that were deficient in in iron, it helped them regain the mineral that they lost. It was actually really interesting. So the two bacteria that they looked at in the study were bifidobacteria and lactobacilli. And if you've been listening to this to this podcast for a while, you hear me talk about lactobacillus a lot. So basically the bottom line with the study is that they fed chickens wheat, the you know, wheat berries, and it you know these wheat berries contain natural prebiotics, um you know, the, the bifidobacteria and lactobacilli. So it reduced the bad bacteria in their gut and it increased the good bacteria, the bifidobacteria and the lactobacilli in their guts. Now this has huge implications for backyard chicken owners like you and me where we want to eat the eggs and we want the eggs to be as healthy as possible. Well, you know, if their gut is as healthy as possible, that means that they're going to lay healthier eggs. So this just confirmed to me that feeding them soaked wheat berries and when you soak the wheat berries, it helps them break down a little bit better, a little bit faster. And it also releases those, you know, natural bacteria in there, the nutrients and everything. Um, and soaking it helps the lactobacillus and the bifidobacteria increase because it creates an anaerobic environment. So what you want to do is you want to soak them overnight and allow them to, you know, start to ferment a little bit. But according to the study, if you do that, you're not only helping them increase their gut health, you're helping them reduce any sort of iron deficiency that they might have. In other words, the natural prebiotics in the soaked wheat berries help your chickens absorb iron better. Now, if you really don't know where to get wheat berries, um, I'll put a link in the show notes where you can see where I personally buy my wheat berries. And if you happen to be listening to this and you're not looking at the show notes, you can go to thefrugalchicken.com slash wheat to see the product that I recommend. But if you've been interested in feeding your hens fermented wheat berries and you're really not sure if it's a good idea or not, this study actually confirms that this, that this is something that probably every backyard chicken owner should be doing. 
if you missed what I said the first time, what you can do is take one cup of wheat berries per hen and just soak them overnight. Just make sure that they stay under the water so that you create a environment where the beneficial bacteria can grow. And this is the beneficial bacteria that might help your chickens reduce iron deficiency. And then go ahead the following day and just feed it to your chickens like you would any other feed. Now I'm assuming in this, when I say this, that you're also feeding a commercial feed. If you're not, if you are making your own feed, you're going to want to feed this in addition to the, to the own ration that you formulated yourself. Now the last thing that we'll talk about is diatomaceous earth. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about DE in this episode, diatomaceous earth is actually made up of microscopic algae. You know, these, these are algae back from like the Mesozoic area, that sort of thing, where they fossilized and now they're basically, you know, uh, diatomaceous earth. Now if you don't really know what diatoms are, they're abundant in every habitat where water is found, so oceans, lakes, streams, that sort of thing. And there's about an estimated 20,000 to 2 million species of diatoms on Earth. So diatomaceous Earth is made of the fossilized remains of these diatoms, it's, and it's mostly silica. Now this is not a good source of iron. Basically, diatomaceous Earth doesn't really have any nutritional value to your chickens at all. Um, it's very good for killing external parasites and there's some studies that indicate that it's good for killing internal parasites and then there's some studies that indicate that it's not good for that um, that it has no effect whatsoever so you can you know, be very sure that it, it's good to kill external parasites such as lice and mites and if you've listened to past episodes of you know this podcast or if you've you know read other articles on the blog you know i've, I've discussed how diatomaceous earth can be used to combat external parasites now, whether you should feed it to your chickens or not, you know, it's not going to hurt them. They've done enough studies that show that it's not going to hurt your chickens or that it's unlikely to hurt your chickens. But there's just really no evidence that it's effective for killing internal parasites. And there's people that will disagree with me on this, and that's fine. Um, I'm just telling you what the studies say. But it's good for killing external parasites, and it works by cutting their exoskeletons. And I personally use it to combat, um, like, mites and lice and that sort of things. Now if you use diatomaceous earth in something like uh, a dust for them to dust bathe in and that sort of thing, they're going to taste it anyways. So like I said, diatomaceous earth, it has no nutritional value. It's not likely to hurt them if they do eat it. And the bottom line is that they're probably going to eat it anyways because as they roll around, they're going to want to taste it and that sort of thing. That chickens are just like that. But for combating iron deficiency or making sure that your chickens are getting enough iron, diatomaceous earth, it won't do that. So it's the end of this episode of What the Cluck. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it gives you some idea of how to recognize iron deficiency and why it's important to make sure that your chickens aren't iron deficient, as well as, you know, allergies and supplements that you can give your chickens that will help them be healthier and improve their immune systems and help them with their gut health. Now, I did promise you a link to where you can grab a free copy of my book, The Better Egg, and you can grab that at thefrugalchicken.com slash thebetteregg. Again, thanks for listening to this episode of What the Cluck, and I'll see you next time.